All right, so constitutions in government. Smile, look a little more excited. Stop sucking your teeth. This is more exciting than you think. Okay, it might not be, but we're gonna make this quick and painless, as fast as possible. Pretty basic stuff here. So the Enlightenment thinkers that we talked about love the idea of social contracts. John Locke and Rousseau both talk about co social contracts. So a social contract is the agreement between the people and the government. The government says they're gonna protect the people. The people are gonna agree to follow the laws. The laws typically protect the people, so most people don't have a problem with that. Rather than everyone just run around willy-nilly with no organized government, uh, the social contract makes things a little bit safer, a little bit easier, a little better. So the constitutions are social contracts. They outline the plan for government, set terms for the agreement. James Madison and the founders of the United States, they took ideas from ancient, ancient Greece and Rome, like Aristotle there, saying, they stole my ideas. The English Bill of Rights, which was signed by William and Mary, um, which you learned in your last unit, and the ideas of the Enlightenment thinkers. And there you can see Montesquieu up there in the corner being like, me too. They took my ideas of three branches of government. So neither of those people have that accent, but I like it. There are two types of constitutions. The first is an unwritten constitution, and the second is a written constitution. England has an unwritten constitution. It's a collection of laws, traditions, court decisions. So the Magna Carta and the English Bill of Rights, which we learned about in our last unit, are both examples of this unwritten constitution. The United States has a written constitution. You know, it starts out like, we the people. That document states the rules and principles of our nation. It sets up our system of government. It was written in 1787. And if you remember, we do have a preamble at the beginning of our Constitution, which talks about the basic goals um, of the Constitution. So what's our Constitution do, other than set goals in the preamble? Well, it creates the basic structure of our government. Three branches of government, who does what, what are their jobs. States the ideals shared by the people, like freedom, life, liberty, property. Defines the government's powers and duties. So. Federal powers, state powers, who does what, how much power does the government have, where do the people come in, and provides the supreme law for the country, the rules that citizens should follow, as well as the government. The Constitution limits power. Um, it should state the powers given to the government. It puts limits on power so that leaders do not abuse the rights of citizens. Um, so. It's making sure that citizens have their rights. Courts will decide if laws are constitutional or unconstitutional. Um, and the United States Constitution can be changed as we change as a country or as different issues come up. The first 10 amendments are probably what you're most um, familiar with. And those are the Bill of Rights. So freedom of speech, religion, right to bear arms, all of that stuff is listed in the Bill of Rights. All right, so that's pretty much all you need to know about our Constitution. It's the supreme law of the land. And now we just need to cover different forms of government. So three vocabulary terms that I want you to know before we continue on with our unit. Here we go. Number one, an autocracy. An autocracy is when the power is in the hands of one leader. It could be one leader and his friends. It's kind of like those absolute leaders we learned about in France and Russia. Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, King Louis XIV, the Sun King, Charles I that got executed. All those people we learned about in our last unit that had all of the power. They had unlimited power and could do whatever they wanted. Our next type is an oligarchy, a government ruled by a small group of people. So that small group of people basically has all the power. The people don't have any say. Um, and then you can see here, leave the thinking to us. Uh, an example would be like modern day China. And let's see, sometimes an autocracy and an oligarchy could have a constitution, but the people don't really have any say there's no limit to the government and 
they pretty much rarely do what the people want. So the constitutions are really just pieces of paper that are hanging out. Okay, so our last one is doo -doo -doo -doo, a democracy. System in which people hold power, usually by voting. So in democracies, the government is not above the law. The government also has to obey the law. The constitution constitutions are living and working, which means they could be changed based on what's going on in the country. And the people expect the government to uh, honor its its social contract. The people have expectations of the government that they must follow. If the people do not like their government, the social contract says they can get rid of it. Um, and they can, of course, change the laws by voting or passing new laws, uh, going through the courts all the way up to the Supreme Court or by making amendments to the Constitution. So democracy, power of the people. We have representatives that go and vote on uh, things for us. And that's the way we roll here in the United States. So that's all we need to know about the Constitution.